All right. Well, welcome everyone. Tonight's webinar is the first session of the summer quarter of my year-long miracles course. For any of you who haven't met me before, I'm Lynn Woodland. I'm the creator of the miracles course. And we have one of these webinar classes virtually every week for enrolled students. And, and tonight we've opened it up for anyone who'd like to audit. We have a lot of people um, registered for tonight. Uh, as I've been saying, we never know how many people are actually going to log in. So we may have people continuing to join us through the evening. It's always a little bit of a free-for-all doing one of these open to the public uh, webinars. Um, makes it fun, makes it a little chaotic. Um, but for those of you who are new to this program, the, the Miracles Course it is a, a comprehensive program of, of spiritual exercises and personal coaching. It's all about living a miraculous life. And the content emphasizes applying spiritual principles to help us all make a big leap into our desired life goals with ease and joy and grace and in a way that we really appreciate the journey as much as the results. And as much as this course is about manifesting our own highest happiness, it's just as much about becoming a leader, a teacher, a healer, and a catalyst for positive change in, in the community and the world around us. Because as we step into true empowerment, we become increasingly aware of our connection to all life and recognize that as one person is left behind, no one can truly move forward. And as we walk our own personal path of highest good, we find that we, we just start very naturally taking others with us. Without even trying, our innate capacity to lead and to heal and to assist just start to powerfully emerge. And this is why this program of personal growth is also an ordination program for those who, who want that certification. And you know, for myself, I actually never thought I wanted to be ordained until I, I did some work with a, a healer and teacher, uh, Willard Fuller. And it wasn't until I finished all his courses, and he just ordained you, whether you wanted to or not, that I realized, oh, Ministry really made sense of what I'd been doing my whole life. So even if you've never thought about ordination, you might find it becomes more meaningful than you would have imagined. Now here with the Miracles Course, we define ministry in a really non-religious kind of way. We define it as our path of highest contribution. And we believe that everybody has such a path. And some of what we do here is about helping to nurture everyone's capacity to, to make a contribution. And now, um, the course works with a seasonal curriculum, with a circular curriculum that uses the seasons as a template for wholeness. So the content actually mirrors the themes of whatever season we're in. And there's something very, very archetypal and subliminal about the, the changing balance of light and dark that affects us whether we're fully aware of it or not. The, the seasons of light call us to externalize and birth things in the physical realm, while the seasons of darkness call us to internalize and to release our attachment to the material world. And the whole cycle of the four seasons makes for a perfect blueprint for the whole of human experience, from birth to death, uh, to manifestation, to release, to, you know, rebirth again. So the Miracles Course has no beginning and no end, with each quarter being a potential starting point. And whenever you begin, you'll be doing the same lessons as every other student in the program. And, and we've invited students who've completed the cycle to keep going, you know, as long as, as you want, because the, the exercises here, the processes, are, are really pretty eternally relevant. 
And, you know, the more we pay attention to this ever-changing circle of life, the, the more it starts to become a driving force in our lives. So the weekly lessons really establish a rhythm and an expectancy for life that, that draws us along. So we start to notice desired goals just developing very naturally in the growing seasons of the year. And unwanted burdens just dropping away in the fall, just, just like leaves from the trees, and, and various other focuses of the course, just seeming to serendipitously appear and resolve when, whenever their seasons come around. Um, I see a message from Nancy. Bill, did you see that? She's having some, some troubles. Yes. We're with you, Nancy. I'll give Bill's you on it. And... And there's a way that struggle just starts giving way to a more harmonious flow of easy transitions and connected, purposeful living. Now, in the spring quarter that we just completed, we addressed topics related to the seasonal themes of of new beginnings and the metaphorical work of planting the seeds we wanted to grow in our lives, which starts the process of bringing our dreams into manifestation. Now, in the summer season, the curriculum reflects nature's season of abundant growth, and we do a lot of work with the the metaphysical principles of manifestation, of prosperity, and later in the season, the lessons match the slowing pace of summer, including themes of, of gratitude and ease and and bliss. So the Miracles course is organized around a weekly written lesson that students access online, and many of these include audio downloads of guided visualizations, like the ones we'll do tonight, actually. And, And nearly every week we do a live presentation of the lesson, like we're doing here. Um... And what I do in these webinar classes follows the content of the written lesson, but they often expand upon it. In fact, what we're doing tonight will expand upon the written lesson. And usually we all have our webcams on so we can see and talk to each other and have a, 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 an informal class experience. You'll, you'll see, uh, you can see Sa- Sandra there. She's been uh, brave and bold and kept her webcam on tonight. Um, But I I put it out to people that you you certainly don't have to do that tonight because we do have a lot of people that we don't usually have as as, uh, a regular part of the the class. But it it really allows us to do spiritual work together and, and, and it becomes a much more fun experience than simply a one-way presentation by me and makes for a chance for me to get to know you all personally so that we can work together in a way that's more tailored to your specific needs. And and just uh, another very powerful layer to the ongoing program that I want to mention before we dive into the the work of tonight is the prayer work of Reverend Deb Teramani. She does a lot of individual work with students. And Rev Deb, as she's often known by, is someone I've known for many years, and I, I've often thought of her as the most spiritual person I know. She's really a powerhouse, and she's now serving as soul coach and pastoral counselor for the Miracles course, offering private consultations to students. And Rev Deb is a, a licensed minister of religious science, particularly known for her, her, her powerful work with spiritual mind treatment. Uh, That's a form of prayer. And she actually prays for people seeking her assistance consistently until their issue is satisfactorily resolved. I mean, she does not stop until people see resolution. And she has a big reputation in her prayer community as a miracle maker. And she's now working with Miracles Course students (coughs) one-on-one around their personal prayer requests, as well as teaching the art and science of how to pray effectively. 
So let's dive in here um, to the, the, the work of tonight, because this week and this month, actually, this whole month of June, is all about the light. The lightest weeks of the year fall in this month leading up to and following the summer solstice, which falls in the third week of June. And and it's just hard not to feel the energy of it this time of year. And just as the dark of winter leaves some people feeling kind of depressed and listless, this time of year is more likely to result in in restlessness and sleeplessness even as, as sunlight starts streaming into our bedrooms earlier and earlier every morning. So this week's lesson is going to be all about the light. And light is so pure and primal. It's it's perhaps one of our most used metaphors. It stands for clarity and goodness and spirituality and salvation from all things dark and scary. We think of light as life-giving and divine. Now from the world of science we know that light and energy and matter are all variations of the same thing. And as quantum science is demonstrating that most of reality actually goes on at a level imperceptible to our human senses, it's also showing the very underpinnings of the universe to consist of a field of light. Now in the 70s, in the 1970s, the highly distinguished physicist Hal Puthoff pioneered studies into the the mysteries of this energy field. It's called the zero point field. And he since has been followed by many, many others. The zero point field essentially is the energy left in a space when all possible matter and energy are removed. This remaining field comprises, very literally, a supercharged sea of light backdrop to everything. And physicists have theorized that that if we learn how to tap it, it could become a limitless energy supply meeting all of our current needs, even enabling things like Star Trek-type space travel. The the, the well-known physicist Richard Feynman actually suggested that the energy in a single cubic meter of space is enough to boil all the oceans of the world. So as physicists work to explain and tap this just incredible ocean of light. There's another very different glimpse into the light that comes out of the the growing body of research on those who've had near-death experiences. Because consistently, people who have clinically died, you know, those folks who've died on the operating table, they've been pronounced dead, and have been revived to come back into their body, to come back to life, they consistently tell a similar story of coming into contact with a mystical light. And these experiences of the light are are profoundly transforming. They leave survivors forever changed. They have a measurably higher zest for life, than the general public. They're they're more apt to have psychic abilities. They are virtually, they never get depressed. And there's even some indication that they might even come back with a higher IQ. And it could very well be that, that this brief clinical death actually releases individuals from the limitations of physical perception, enabling them to have a direct experience of the zero-point field. And interestingly, the mystical light that people describe is far from a cold or neutral thing. Again and again, those who've seen it tell of a light that's powerfully benevolent, a light of unconditional love, a light that is synonymous with 
the, the experience of love. So we're seeing from these different streams of science the existence of a limitless living energy field of light and love. One that's everywhere, yet it's invisible to our physical senses. To me, this sounds like a description of God, maybe something that's, that's at the heart, the kernel of truth, at the heart of, of what all religions grasp to describe. Now, science writer Lynn McTaggart hinted at this benevolent, mystical nature of the universe in some of her concluding remarks in, in her just fabulous book called The Field. It's just all about new science. I highly recommend it. Um, but she said, said that new scientific thinking is actually helping to give us back our optimism as we realize that we aren't simply alone in an indifferent universe. And here I'm quoting her. She said, Far from destroying God, science for the first time was proving his existence. End quote. So scientists are working on machines to extract energy from the limitless zero-point field, and, you know, maybe they will someday succeed. But perhaps there's a more commonplace path into this field, one that's accessible to all of us. And if, as near-death accounts suggest, unconditional love is synonymous with the field of light underpinnings of the universe, and if what religions refer to, of, uh, to, refer to as God has some corollary in the zero-point field, Maybe tapping the field happens naturally when we simply practice unconditional love and as we open ourselves to the, to the sacredness of life. To, to illustrate spiritual law, I, I sometimes cite Mother Teresa as a role model when I, I teach classes on prosperity. And this is a little paradoxical because Mother Teresa lived such a simple life among the poor that we tend, you know, not to think of her as a role model for prosperity. However, she was really very, very good at manifesting material resources, and accounts of her life are filled with stories of last-minute saves where the support she needed to continue her work just showed up, just as she needed it, often in very serendipitous and miraculous ways. And she had this absolute faith that God would provide. And um, her priorities and attention really remained on caring for the poorest of the poor rather, on, rather than on getting what she needed because she really did just leave all that to God. And, and you know, just as she manifested easily without it having to become her focus, I believe she gave just as easily as well, without having to focus on it, without having to work at it. As she once put it herself, and, and I'm quoting her here, she said, when you know how much God is in love with you, then you can only live your life radiating that love, end quote. And Mother Teresa lived in an awareness of God's love that, that just so filled her to overflowing that all she could do was share it. Consequently, she wasn't really focused on giving or getting. She was simply living in the fullness of God, which just spontaneously, automatically heightened her abilities to both give and attract. W working with Mother Teresa's wisdom uh, to, to look at how, you know, she perhaps discovered what physicists haven't. She perhaps discovered how to tap the limitless power of the field. And, and I want to just go back to her very simple statement as perhaps holding some keys. So, so think about it. She said, when you know how much God is in love with you, in other words, when you're aware 
of this ever-present field of love and light and, and your oneness with it, then you can only live your life radiating that love. In other words, then you quite naturally tap this loving energy of the field. So by Mother Teresa's wisdom, access to the field of, of light begins with simply knowing it. And you know what better time of year to know the light of divine love than now, in this light-filled month of June, when light, physical light, is at its peak. And we're going to do some spiritual work with this in just a bit, but first I, I, I want to just say a little bit about popular teachings um, on the law of attraction and on manifesting, manifesting what we want through the power of intention, because there's such a huge body of, of work on that now that's become very, very popular. And there's a, a big difference between manifesting at it as it's typically taught and what I think of as miracle making. And, and the difference is that while miracles may very well heal us and bring all of our heart's desires to fruition, miracles are not really about the outcome of getting what we want. Miracle making isn't about just getting what we want. Miracles are, are such a direct experience of God that they change us, that they don't merely produce an effect. And I talked a bit last week about popular teachings being a, a little out of date because they try to present non-linear concepts in a linear way, particularly as we talked about last week in regard to time, which science is showing to, to be completely illusionary. Um, we did a lot of work last week with, with bending time. And this whole premise that we have to you know, read the book, practice the exercises, change our consciousness, and then we'll see results manifest, this whole premise goes out the window when we work outside of time. Because when we work outside of time, we might well see results first and do the exercise later. And we, we went into that last week, so I'm not going to go deeply into that again. But tonight I want to address another aspect, another way that, that a lot of teachings have, have just gone a bit out of date. And perhaps this is the most important way of all. Because teachings that emphasize manifesting, manifesting what we want using the power of our minds, they teach us, first off, the importance of self-love, which is a very good thing. They teach us that it's not a selfish or bad thing to want or to desire from life, and that it's not selfish to receive abundantly from life. And, and that's a very good thing. And this big body of teachings also teach the power that an individual has to change their own reality, which is also important and, and a very good lesson to learn. But what they don't teach is, is the higher truth, that the quickest path to personal fulfillment is through joining in love and showing up for each other. Because for one thing, there's a, a tremendous amplifying effect in joining together for the good of all. It's not just selfless, it's efficient. In fact, there's some science to that. There's, there's a, a very well-known research team of Robert John and Brenda Dunn, who are best known for their work with random event generators using intention to shift results. And they've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that intention can affect matter. Intention alone can move the physical plane. Now, what they also discovered is that when two harmoniously joined minds set out to affect results, they're not just twice as powerful as a single mind. To get, uh, they actually are six times as powerful as a single operator. So harmoniously joined minds are exponentially more powerful than a single mind. Um, 
so there, there's an incredible advantage to doing this kind of spiritual work together, and that's something we work with a lot here. Now, there's this whole dynamic of joining in love with other people to create results for all of us together. I think this is the way humanity is moving. I think it's the way we're evolving as a species. And I, I'm not going to go too deeply into that here because I, that would definitely take up the next hour. And I, I know we don't have that much time. Uh, but I believe this, this part of our human evolution, this direction... I believe it's going to open to us a power source greater than anything we've known before. Uh, a kind of power that we can only get to through love. And, and truly, without love, we wouldn't be able to handle in a responsible way. And in terms of just simple, basic manifesting work, joining in love as part of the process, working with other people, it can really help us to step away from that very counterproductive state of attachment. And, and Law of Attraction teachings tell us to focus on what we want, to create the vibration of it within ourselves, and then it will show up. And this is, this is true, you know, this is absolutely true, if we can, in fact, stay in the vibration of what we love. <clears throat> but what often happens is that we identify what we want, we imagine it as though it's real, we create that inner, inner vibration of our heart's desire. And that is a love vibration. It's that feeling of, ah, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful? That's a very expansive feeling, and it is a very magnetic vibration. However, this expansive state you know, because we're human. It can be a very difficult thing to hang on to. And what's typical is that this, this state of joy sooner or later morphs into a state of attachment. We go from a place of, ah, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful, to, hmm, when am I going to get it? When's it going to happen? What if I don't get it? So we start watching, we start waiting for signs of what we want to show up. We wonder if it'll show up. We worry that it won't show up. And all of a sudden, instead of living in the moment in this expansive magnetic state of joy and love, we're worrying about a future outcome. And we've gone into a, a, a much more shut down state of fear and attachment. On the other hand, when we go into that expansive state of visioning our own heart's desire, and then we shift our attention to loving someone else and getting excited about their heart's desires, we're much less likely to start obsessing and worrying about ourselves. We remain in a state that's magnetic to our highest good. And it's easy to get excited for someone else without going into a place of attachment. Plus, when we do that for them, it is a kind of prayer that we offer on their behalf. And that, that prayer really helps to amplify their manifesting work. There's a lot of research documenting the power of prayer, even when people don't know they're being prayed for. And when others are doing the same for us, holding our highest good in their hearts and, and really letting our highest good matter to them. Together we create an energy field of magnetic loving vibration that raises us all up so that we attract our highest good with much greater ease than we ever could alone. In fact, this is when we start to attract miracles, things that are far better than anything we even imagined or asked for. So we're going to experience this now. This is when we do some of, some of our spiritual work together. We'll have a chance to do some, mag some manifesting for ourselves and for one another. So for this part, you might want to get comfortable in your seat and close your eyes. And just relax your body and quiet your thoughts with some deep, full breaths. 
<sighs> and just let your whole sense of identification shift from the density and the limitation of matter to the bright, clear, beautiful energy that is your true essence. And as you make this shift in perception, you leave behind all the limitations of dense matter and, and you can even start to see the cells of your physical body now lit up, radiant with this energy. And all the particles that make up your body are becoming less dense. The molecules, the atoms, the subatomic particles are spreading out and vibrating in beautiful light. And as you leave the density of matter behind, you enter a realm of limitless possibilities where time and space have no bearing. And, and you can see now the bright, clear energy of all the others here on this conference joining you. And imagine us all vibrating together in joined consciousness beyond all the illusionary limits of the space, the distance separating us, as well as the time separating us, because there will be others watching the recording of this live event. And even in different times, we can still be together. Because truly time is an illusion when, it's, when it comes to joining in consciousness. So each of us brings only our highest and best to this connection. See this joining as beautiful, sacred, awe-inspiring, filled with the, the potent energy of love. And recognize how much more powerful we are together, exponentially powerful. Our joined intentions quicken our growth and awaken our intuition and heighten our magnetism to our highest good so that whatever has seemed difficult in the past can now come more easily. So, so really feel the light and the energy of this whole network building and strengthening. And we're, we're going to expand our access now to the zero point field. We're going to tap the field. We're going to tap that divine light of unconditional love. So for this, just allow to come to mind some of the most perfect experiences of love that you've ever had. Moments of love so powerful that you feel filled up and content in the moment just by recalling them. For example, and it's okay if, if, if it's hard to recall moments, you can perhaps recall moments that haven't happened yet in linear time. So for a starter, imagine just loving life so much that you just can't wait to jump out of bed in the morning. And you go to sleep feeling grateful and content, looking forward to the following day simply because life is good. You don't even have to know any of the details of why. Just imagine that feeling of, of just rising to meet each day with tremendous joy. And now imagine just the most perfect day in nature where your mind becomes quiet and you just can't help but become one with the beauty that's all around you. Maybe you're in the most beautiful garden on the most perfect day with flowers everywhere and fragrance in the air and birds singing, the very air charged with peace. 
you breathe it in and you absorb it through every pore and all you can feel is joy and gratitude and now imagine now imagine the, the inspiration the reverence the savoring of a fine work of art or music that just lifts you out of yourself a beauty that, that touches you heart and soul and moves you to the core. Or imagine the experience of being in a spiritually charged, sacred place. Or in the midst of a spiritual experience where the presence of God is palpable and awe-inspiring, and you just give yourself over to it. And now imagine, now imagine melting into the loving embrace of someone who you love dearly, someone who loves you just as much, and you don't even need to know who this is, you might be remembering someone you haven't met yet. Just let yourself relax into the deep comfort that comes when love and trust and familiarity are all present. And feel the joy when chemistry and compatibility are both there. Imagine sharing laughter, it just won't stop, it just can't be controlled. Imagine just sleeping peacefully at night because life is so good and you are so loved. And now imagine holding a small child or perhaps a, a kitten or, or a puppy or a tiny creature one who, who just relaxes into you with complete trust. And you feel how soft and sweet the little body is against you. And you feel how unconditionally the small being loves. You know, just, just imagine loving so deeply the tears come. And just allow that welling up to happen, to keep getting bigger and bigger. And now imagine the energy of the zero point field. And picture this as a field all around you, within you, an ever present invisible sea of light that contains unlimited potential. And what's more, it's inherently intelligent and kind. Just imagine the very air around you to be alive and filled with love. And it holds you in, in the most intimate embrace, just like those loving arms around you that you imagined a little earlier. And you relax, you relax completely and softly into this loving energy, just like a small child filled with absolute trust. And as you feel that relaxation, that letting go, that love, you've tapped the field. And even if you don't feel it, just think it. Because so much of this work here happens below the level of our conscious awareness. So it doesn't truly matter what you're experiencing consciously. Just know this energy is having a very real effect on you, body and mind. If you're in need of healing, this will give you a boost. 
Don't try to focus on anything. Just be the, the tiny child, imagining yourself completely relaxed in loving arms. And let this feeling of complete safety, of, of complete relaxation into the goodness of life. Just reach a peak of intensity. And as it does, send it. Send it to everyone on this conference, knowing that your directed love is an invisible yet very real and powerful force, a force that's quietly helping to make life good for someone, and for, for many, perhaps, whom you'll never meet. And realize that the people are also sending love to you and, and that their love is quietly making life better for you. That you're more loved than you know. That you're not alone. That you can hand over some of your goals, some of your burdens, some of your striving because you now have help. And we're going to take this experience even a notch further here. And we're going to direct this love in a very focused, healing way. So with, with your eyes still closed, just, just place a hand over your heart. Just do that physically, not just in your imagination. Really feel the weight of that physical contact on your heart. Feel it giving warmth and comfort and amplifying spiritual light. Healers know this, that we have energy centers in our hands. So an amplification of energy actually happens when you do this. And as you keep this contact of your own hand over your heart, now imagine comforting, loving hands, gently making contact with your back over the area of your heart. And you can imagine this as maybe the hand of God or of angels or of loving souls who care about you in an unconditional way. And you don't need to believe any of this is real. Just imagine it so that it becomes real in your mind's eye, so that you can really feel it. You feel that contact of your own hand to heart, and you feel the contact behind you of hands over your heart center in the back. And just, just really feel the warmth and comfort of the contact on your back. And imagine now that these loving hands are washing you with the light of divine love. And you just relax, let it in, and let love just, just wash away anything you no longer need, any dis-ease of body or of mind or of emotion. Let it all be washed away in this flood of healing love. <coughs> And in this moment, just completely surrender to all the sensations in your body. Don't think about it, just feel, be present, hold the intention that love is washing you healed, is washing you whole. And imagine yourself starting to vibrate in the unlimited way of light and energy and love you can Feel it through your body. You can see a beautiful light getting brighter and brighter within you. And know that a repatterning is taking place at the deepest level of your being, awakening you to love, making you magnetic to your highest good, and really at every level. Again, you don't need to believe any of this, so don't worry about validating it analytically. Just be present in your body right now. Just be present. Just let love work its miracles. 
and, and now let your attention shift just a bit. Because as you've been filled to overflowing with this light and love, now put yourself in a giving role and picture yourself placing your hands gently on the back of someone here in this conference. You don't need to see who it is. It could be someone here in the present. It could be someone in the future. You don't need to know that. You just have a sense, an imaginary sense of their presence, of their light, of their spirit. And as I often say here, imagination is often the doorway that takes us into intuitive reality. So don't worry if it feels like you're just making all this up. Really imagine your hand on someone's back over their heart and you can feel that warm connection of your hand touching that area of their heart center. And with this touch, let the light of divine love flow through you to this person. Send all this love out your hand, softening and comforting, awakening this person's heart center, and, and, and just love this person with all your heart. Not for any reason, and just because you can. And because this simple extending of kindness is powerful enough to change this person's life for the better. So just for a moment, love this person as God loves, as if they were the most precious child. And know that as you can feel this yourself, this love for another, this unconditional love, you actually are in a tremendously magnetic state. That This state of unconditional love isn't just a healing presence to someone else. It's also your highest healing state that's attracting to you your highest good, maybe beyond anything you've ever imagined. So just take a deep breath and then let it go. Just, just hold gratitude in your heart for a moment to all of those out there who've been part of your manifesting team. And uh, as you're ready, just come back and open your eyes. And over the next few weeks, when you find yourself out of doors, while we're at this peak time, of, of the sun's cycle of light, of the Earth's cycle of light, really, or at least in our northern hemisphere where most of us are, are from. I know we had one person signed up from Australia. <laughs> you have kind of a different experience. You have to reverse it. Um, but, but for most of us, over the next few weeks, as we find ourselves out of doors, let's really let it be a reminder of the light of divine love, of, of the zero-point field, the God energy that's ever-present, that holds us all in unconditional love. And uh, let it just, just really awaken this state of love. Let it wash divine love through you. Let it heal you, calm you, heighten your joy in living. And then send it on. Send it on to everyone who's been part of this webinar. Send it on to all the people in your life who you want to support with your love. And also send it on to those people you most um, love to hate. I, sometimes I think those are the most powerful teachers in our lives. And as you can love some of them unconditionally, you're going to see incredible transformations happen in your own life. So for those of you who are enrolled students, there's some exercises in the written material of this lesson that we didn't do here. In particular, there's a really fun manifesting exercise that's really cool. So, so definitely go check out the, the written material as well as this webinar. 
Um, for those of you who aren't enrolled students but would like to be, enrollment in this summer quarter is open up until the 15th of June. I don't recommend waiting that long if you don't have to because you'll miss a little bit. Uh, but you can still catch up if you jump in at that point. Um, and you can find out how to enroll just by going to my website and clicking on the Miracles course. Or you can just send me an email and I'll, I'll have our course administrator get in touch with you. Now at this point, this is when I like to open it up for sharing. And I know we have a, a, an awful lot of background noise going on with all the people on. As always, I love to hear your comments. And if you write to me at lynn at lynnwoodland.com, I'll write back to you. I'll also send you a free download of a, a class on creating prosperity for a new era. Check out my website. You can find all kinds of free downloads, recorded meditations. There's a place where you can leave a request for free distance healing and a lot of other things. Uh, if you'd like to explore a deeper dive into this kind of spiritual and personal work, check out my, my year-long miracles course, which is a comprehensive coaching program of online materials and live webinar classes and one-to-one -one coaching and, and more. So until next month, namaste.